Hydraulic rail pullers, also known as rail tensors, are frequently used on railroads to close rail end gaps during pull-aparts or welding. The inner pack rail puller is a 120 ton rail tensor with hydraulic intensifier unit designed to pull the rail for pull-aparts, welding, and de-stressing. It is equipped with a retractable spreader beam, two control valve levers, and two control valve knobs. This video contains important information on the correct installation, operation, and maintenance of the inner pack rail puller. All persons involved in the operation and maintenance of this equipment must be thoroughly familiar with the contents of this video. This rail puller is the latest model. Older models that are still used in the field may require maintenance not shown in this video. Be aware of the model you are using and maintain the rail puller according to its specifications. Always follow proper safety procedures and take precautions when working with hydraulic rail pullers. Do not stand near either end of a rail puller when in operation. Only the operator will be near the rail puller when making the pull. Only employees completing the task will be near the rail puller when in use. Ensure safety appliances are in use, in good working condition, and are functioning properly. After use, lift rail pullers straight up and do not place feet where they will be caught between the rail puller and rail or ties. Use of a tag line is required. Always wear proper PPE and protective clothing during operation of this system. Never exceed the rated 2000 PSI input pressure. Always inspect before each use of all system parts for wear, distortion, cracks, or improper fit. Never use a rail puller that is leaking oil. Replace the leaking component before use. Always be aware of pulling force and system pressure during the pull by monitoring the integrated tonnage pressure gauge while operating the system. Reapply dust caps to quick couplers when not in use. Relieve any trapped pressure from the rail puller by shifting the control valves with the PTO off before connecting or disconnecting PTO lines. Warning: Never disassemble any hydraulic connections on the rail puller to release trapped pressure. See the troubleshooting guide for correct procedure to release trapped pressure in the rail puller hydraulic circuit. Follow these rules when operating a hydraulic rail puller. Inspect all equipment and ensure it is free of defects and in proper working condition before each use. Hydraulic systems must store fluid under high pressure. Four kinds of hazards exist. Burns from the hot high pressure spray of fluid, bruises, cuts, or abrasions from flailing hydraulic lines, injection of fluid into the skin. Leaking hydraulic fluid may erupt into flames if a source of ignition is present. Frequent inspection of hydraulic system can prevent injuries. When performing an inspection, do the following. Visually inspect hose condition. Look for damage and signs of leaks before the system is energized. Ensure all line connections are tight and lines are not damaged. Escaping oil under pressure is a fire hazard and can cause personal injury. Seepage must be corrected immediately. When a leak is suspected, do the following. Run a piece of wood or cardboard along the hose to detect the leak. Do not use hands, gloved or not, for this purpose. Keep all contaminants from hydraulic oil and replace filters periodically. Safe hydraulic system performance requires general maintenance. Pressure relief valves incorporated into the hydraulic system will avoid pressure buildups during use. Do not remove pressure relief valves and only authorized personnel are allowed to adjust the pressure relief valves. To prevent ruptures, do not incorporate a low pressure component, coupler, hose, or fitting on a high pressure system. Hydraulic system must be checked and maintained to ensure proper flow and pressure. Systems should be checked annually when tools are not performing properly or when any part of the hydraulic system has been repaired. Gallons per minute hydraulic flow requirements vary based on type, model, and age of the tool. Refer to the manufacturer's operator manual for pressure and GPM requirements for each specific tool. Do not operate tools at flow rates outside the manufacturer's specifications. Generally, all rail pullers require 5 GPM to operate properly. A rail puller is used to pull rail together during pull-aparts, service failures, or while installing thermite welds. 
Review and be familiar with the manufacturer's operating and maintenance instructions before operating equipment. If manuals are not available, contact your supervisor to obtain a copy. Inspect the rail puller, including connections, fittings, and hoses for hydraulic leaks, damage, or other visible defects. Any time a rail puller is used, caution must be taken, and only authorized personnel are permitted to operate equipment. All other individuals must not be near the rail puller when in operation. Do not place feet between rail and rail puller connecting rods when rail puller is under pressure. Follow these procedures when using a rail puller. Low joints must be raised and ties tamped before setting rail puller on the rail. Remove by grinding any raised lettering on the rail where clamping jaws contact the rail. Remove dirt or grease from this area using a wire brush or torch if necessary. Clean and inspect the clamping jaws for conditions that could reduce gripping. Pre-align rail ends to be thermite welded to an approximate crown before pulling the rail. Alignment plates must be used for aligning rail. Remove enough rail anchors or clips to allow the rail to move the required distance to complete the pull. Removing rail anchors or clips allows the rail to move freely and not overexert the rail puller. If the desired pull cannot be achieved, release the rail puller, remove additional rail anchors or clips, and pull again. Do not strike any portion of the rail puller or track structure while rail puller is under load, including removing or applying rail anchors or clips. Striking the rail puller or track structure may cause the rail puller to slip. Ensure mechanical lockdown device is installed in proper working condition and in use. Let's begin with what is required for a daily visual inspection and then go into some detail regarding annual maintenance requirements. First, lift the puller from your truck. Follow all safety rules for working with trucks and equipment. Always use a tagline when removing or placing rail pullers to and from your truck. Certain daily tasks must be completed before using the rail puller. These tasks include Inspect and clean the clamping jaws with a wire brush. Assure that the jaws are installed with the arrow pointing in the direction of the pull. Lubricate swing arms and jaw pockets with lubricating spray. Inspect the mechanical lockdown device to ensure it is intact and functioning properly. If mechanical lockdown device is not intact with all required parts, rail puller must be tagged and removed from service until repaired. Check for any indication of hydraulic fluid leaks in hoses, fittings, and cylinders. Inspect the height blocks before each use. Next, let's talk about the annual maintenance requirements and show the key steps in the process. We will clean and regrease all pivot points. Lubricate the speed valve and lock valve. Clean all exterior surfaces of the puller. Inspect or replace the rail puller jaws. Inspect all fittings and hoses and replace any worn or damaged decals. The tools and material you will need for the inspection are a cotter pin removal tool, brake cleaner, anti-seize lubricant, lightweight lubricating oil, cribbing blocks or railroad ties to place the puller on, a lining bar, standard mechanics tools such as socket wrenches, locking pliers, and allen wrenches. A 4-inch wire wheel, flapper disc, wire brush, or emery cloth. Let's get started. Place the puller on blocking to gain access to the lower portion of the swing arms for disassembly. Be sure the puller is secure, stable, and safe. You can use cribbing blocks or railroad ties for this. Power wash or wipe all rail puller surfaces clean. Perform a general overview inspection of the puller assembly to ensure that all of the hardware and components are securely fastened. Inspect hydraulic hoses for damage or excessive wear. If noted, they should be replaced immediately. Remove the cotter pin, securing the clevis pin, if provided. Remove the bolt and washer plate from the bracket securing the swing arm. Remove the clevis rod. Carefully move the tie rod away from the swing arm. 
Movement back and forth may ease swing arm removal. Use of a bar may be required to loosen the swing arm from the bracket. Apply penetrating oil to help loosen. Care should be taken while removing the swing arm from the bracket. Never place any part of your body under the swing arm when removing. Now that the swing arm is removed, let's clean the pivot points and movement surfaces. It is important to remove all debris and contamination from the movement surfaces. Use brake cleaner to clean the bracket surface. Use brake cleaner along with a wire wheel, flapper disc, wire brush or emery cloth to clean the swing arm surfaces. Next, lubricate the swing arm pivot point with anti-seize lubricant. Use brake cleaner along with a wire wheel or wire brush to clean the clevis rod surfaces. Lubricate the clevis rod and pin with anti-seize lubricant. Next, we'll work on the rail jaws. Begin by removing the socket head cap screw, securing the jaw to the swing arm. The screw is located on the bottom side. Remove the jaws from the swing arm pocket. Thoroughly clean the swing arm pocket of all corrosion, contamination, and debris. Then put anti-seize compound inside the pocket area. Inspect the jaws for wear or damage and replace all four jaws if required. Clean the jaw surface using a stiff wire brush or file card. Do not put any lubrication or anti-seize on the jaw teeth. Jaws and rail both need to be clean and free of any debris, paint, grease, or raised letters. In some cases, the jaws need only maintenance. Replace jaws before they reach a point that allows slipping. Apply anti-seize to movement surfaces. Once all of the surfaces are cleaned and anti-seize is applied, reinstall the jaws. When raised letters or numbers on the rail cannot be avoided, grind those areas so the jaws make full contact with the web of the rail. Conditions like these may cause the rail puller to slip. Now, let's take a look at the intensifier unit and ensure its maintenance and operability. Clean all intensifier surfaces. Lubricate the lock valve and the speed valve. Replace any missing or damaged decals. It is critical to perform an overall visual inspection of the rail puller. Items to look for are cracked or leaking fittings, worn hoses, or loose bolts. Let's talk about the main parts and components of the inner pack puller. They are the control panel of the intensifier unit, the beam, lifting hook, beam lock pin, brackets, jaws, tie rod, pull cylinder, swing arms, and the safety springs with latch bars. On the control panel are the beam control lever, the pull control lever, lock pins, speed control valve, pull lock valve, pull tonnage gauge, PTO pressure connection, and the PTO tank connection. Rail must be as clean as possible. Do not place the unit in a position where the jaws contact raised letters, placards, grease, glue, or ice. Grind raised letters if necessary. Center the jaws in the web. Pull all spikes and remove all anchors that may come in contact with the rail puller during operation. The puller should be stored and transported with the puller in the open position, with the pole cylinders fully extended and carrying beam fully retracted. This allows the puller to be hoisted directly off the truck and over the ball of the rail at the next weld without adjustment. When lowering the puller on the rail, center the red arrow locator over the rail gap for optimum positioning. To connect truck PTO lines, first remove the dust caps. To prevent contamination, ensure the couplers are free of debris before coupling together. Connect the hoses to the couplers and turn collars to secure. Turning the collars will prevent accidental disconnection while in use. PTO should be set to 5 GPMs. Now that the puller is in position on the rail, take the following steps to operate the puller. To clamp the rail web, 
Shift the beam control valve to the extend position. Turn the speed control valve clockwise until the beam extends to close and set the swing arms. After the swing arms are closed, reopen the control valve by turning counterclockwise. Close the load lock valve by turning the knob clockwise. Note, when levers are not in use, replace lock pins to prevent movement. Latch all four swing arms on the brake unit mechanical lockdown device before pulling. Brake handles should be locked in leaf spring. If not already removed, remove the beam lock pin from the light end. Shift the beam control lever to the retract position and turn the speed control valve clockwise until the beam begins to retract. When the beam travel stops, shift the beam control lever back to the center position and reopen the speed control valve by turning counterclockwise. Lift the beam to the upright position and lock the beam in the upright position by replacing the beam pivot lock pin in the pivot lock hole located on the control panel end. To close the gap, shift the pole control valve to the pole position and begin turning the speed control valve clockwise until the rail puller begins closing the gap. Monitor the tonnage gauge for pull force. Continuing to turn the speed control clockwise increases the speed and force of the pull. Turn the speed control valve counterclockwise to slow down the pole for measuring and controlling the gap in the final stages of the pole. When the correct gap is obtained, place the pole control lever back to the center position and turn the speed control valve counterclockwise. Do not strike any portion of the rail puller or rail while the rail puller is under load. Do not remove or apply rail anchors while the rail puller is under load. Only the operator should stand alongside the rail puller when operating. Only employees essential to the work being performed are allowed near the rail puller when in operation. Proceed with the required rail welding or rail maintenance application. If the procedures listed do not fix the problem, the equipment will require service. Contact the track welding manager or work equipment manager. Rail puller fails to operate. Check pressure and tank connections for PTO. Ensure PTO is turned on. Check PTO for required pressure, 2000 PSI, and flow of 5 GPM minimum. Check cylinder hose connections. And check for external leaks. Rail puller operates but fails to build full tonnage. Check for required pressure, 2000 PSI, and flow of 5 GPM. Check cylinder hose connections. Check for external leaks. Check for faulty pressure gauge. Unable to connect or disconnect PTO lines. Trapped hydraulic pressure in the rail puller hydraulic circuit. Rail puller hydraulically locked on the rail. Follow these steps. Make sure the PTO is off. Remove the lock pins. Shift the control levers through all positions. Open the speed control valve all the way, turning the knob counterclockwise. Open the release screw valve on the back of the intensifier manifold by turning counterclockwise one to one and a half turns using pliers and a rag to protect you from oil spray. Wear a plastic full face shield and goggles when doing this. Shift the control lever through all positions to release remaining trapped pressure. Congratulations, you have watched the Interpac Hydraulic Rail Puller Operation and Maintenance video and should now have the knowledge to safely and effectively use rail pullers as part of your job assignment. You have learned about daily inspection and maintenance, annual maintenance, and how to properly operate the Interpac rail puller. Remember to contact your supervisor if you have any questions prior to operating the Interpac rail puller. Have a safe day, and remember, safety is my responsibility.